Hey there babes, it's me, Tatiana. Surprise! Welcome to an unusual video on this channel, an actual milestone. The last time I considered myself to have hit a milestone was 30k, which was over a year ago. I'm gonna quickly bash out the uh, the congratulations to myself and, and a thank you to all of you and all the, the plugs I need to do now, because if this video goes correctly, I will not remember to do that. Thank you to everyone that subscribed, we've got a lot of new subscribers recently, and I mean within the last two weeks we've had around 8,000 new subscribers, which is crazy. Now I know that that number isn't going to keep increasing at that rate, but um, frankly if I don't celebrate now then when will I celebrate? When I reached 30k subscribers I kind of assumed that I would keep rising. However, I went away for exams. When I came back, my channel was not in a good position. For an entire year, I was running a negative subscriber value to the point where up until I uploaded that baby fur video, I was pretty sure I was gonna drop below 30K. Now I'm not entirely sure what I would have done if I dropped below 30K, but I'm pretty sure I would have been rather upset. In fact, on the level of it may have broken me in terms of this channel. Uploading the baby fur video was a complete turning point for me. We had a huge amount of new people that wanted to view this content and they could watch all the old content I produced and it's instantly created a new sort of wave of uh, my community. My Discord is very active, my other social medias are very active, everyone has been very very nice. Now I know that my subscriber rate again isn't going to keep going up so it's just going to be us really for the most part. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with celebrating me reaching 50k and that being it. Obviously I hope that someday I will keep growing, but for now I'm happy with where I am. So thank you to everyone that subscribed and thank you to everyone that of course has stuck around and are watching these new videos. I do hope you enjoy them. Now as a give back to the community, I've actually purchased a Minecraft server because a lot of my viewers play Minecraft. The server IP can be accessed from the Discord, so you'll have to join the Discord to get the server IP. At the moment, anyone from the Discord is allowed on it. We've created a very nice community on there. It's a little bit of an experimental server. Um, if you go on, you'll see why, but that is just a give back to the community. Um, thank you very much for all of that. Thank you very much for the support on the OnlyFans as well. It's a bit of an unusual one to thank people for, but it's very liberating to do OnlyFans. Um, if that's, of course, something that you're interested in, and I definitely was interested in doing it. Uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's, it's hard to explain why it's nice, but it's nice. It's, it's nice to see it. It's nice to see me as well. If you've noticed, I'm wearing this red dress. I haven't worn it in a long time, but it was actually the red dress I wore for the 100 subscriber special. So I thought I'd bring it back. Why not? The only thing that's changed is my hair, because it costs about £60 more. Fun fact about this dress, my Catholic priest uncle technically bought it for me. He gave me an Amazon voucher for Christmas. I'm not entirely sure if the Catholic church would approve of uh, this use of their funds, but um, thanks for that. Anyway guys, go join the Discord, leave a like on this video, join my Twitter, leave a comment, go join my Instagram, I did that all out of order, very proud of myself. Go do all the standard stuff, but if you're here probably watching q and A, I I think you've probably already done that stuff, so thank you very much, and enjoy uh, watching me get, here we go, drunk as fuck. So in my 30k Q&A, if you haven't watched it, I got kind of wasted. Uh, not that wasted, I was just doing some shots. Uh, after the video ended though, I did drink about five more shots, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, this is uh, Tova Rich. Now you might say, Red Banner looks kind of like Smirnoff. Did they copy that from Smirnoff? No, other way around. Smirnoff copied this one. This is a vodka only available in Russia, but specialist stores do import it. Um, it's hailed as one of the best vodkas in the world. It has won every award for vodka, <laughs> and apparently it's very good. However, I've never had it straight, so um, I am going to try and do some shots of this. I also have uh, some, some Coca-Cola there, if I need it. However, I also have a massive amount of other spirits. It's funny because I don't like doing straight shots of stuff, even though I have a lot of alcohol, but that's because 
I like mixing. I don't like drinking straight drinks. I like drinking gay drinks. Anyway, if I don't do a shot now, I'm gonna psych myself out. Uh, and now I've said it for the video, hopefully my brain will go, oh, we have to do it now. We have to take a shot. So Diane, how are you gonna do a shot without your mask? I'm gonna blur it out, you fucking bastard. <sighs> All right, don't psych yourself out. Just do it, just do the shot. Oh, it's gonna taste like a party. I know it is. It's gonna, it's gonna remind me. <laughs> oh. Oh. You know... <laughs> there it is. I know what they mean. I was hesitant on that, but actually, that is not bad. That's not the worst vodka there. Ding. We're gonna start with the Patreon questions, because I feel like they should go first. Oh, my body, my body's not reacting well to vodka. Okay, it's been a long time. It's been a long fucking time. What or whom was your inspiration to start a YouTube channel? I'd been watching YouTube for a long time, like a long time, like 2010. Actually, I think even before that, my first memories of watching YouTube were Lego stop motion videos. I used to love those and I used to always want to be a Lego stop motion YouTube channel. When I was really young, I had a lot of Lego, I still got a lot of it, and I would build sets and I'd try and make Lego stop motion. And it was pretty much just made on a camera and then I would put it all together in Windows Movie Maker. God, these are the days. God, these are, the, that, that's helped draw out some memories. I put them all together on Windows Movie Maker and I'd make these little stop motion videos and it was really cool and I was like, I would always watch these stop motion videos and I'd go, oh, I could do that. And I probably could if I if I'd worked slightly harder at it, but I am very bad at keeping uh, on something for a long time. But after that, I started getting into gaming channels. I watched a lot of the Yogg's cast, uh, and I still do watch a lot of the Yogg's cast, no matter how many controversies they have. At least the people that are problematic actually leave the channel. <coughs> <coughs> But anyway, I really liked the Yogscast, and again, this was when I was still quite young. I started a YouTube channel first, I played some Minecraft, that was it, and I didn't understand at the time um, that to actually be a good Minecraft YouTube channel, you actually kind of had to be a bit older than the target audience you were focusing. I didn't understand that. So it was me with my very, very squeaky voice doing Minecraft uh, Let's Plays uh, on a terrible capture thing. Uh, we used fraps back then and it was awful but <laughs> that was what I used to do and I think I made did I make a second channel or yeah that, or then I made a channel with a group of friends again it was still me uh, pre-puberty <laughs> with my friends who were a year older than me that had gone through puberty so they all had deep voices and then there was me <laughs> It was just squeaking the whole time. <laughs> that worked out for a little bit, but again, it didn't really, it didn't get above 30 subscribers. And I mean, considering that was like five of our friends, so like 25 people actually came and saw our uh, channel. And after that, I made another gaming channel. I think I had three gaming channels in total, not including the group channel. Uh, but the the last channel before this was my most successful. It got to about 700 subscribers pretty much all from one video um, But I worked very hard at that and um, Before it was a gaming channel actually it was a well actually okay <laughs> It was a gaming channel then it became like an animatic channel But I wasn't very good at that. So I stopped doing that then it became a my little pony uh, review and theory channel where I would delve into lore and try and explain things scientifically. I wasn't very really good at science but I was very interested in it. Um, the videos weren't very good. Uh, you cannot find them on YouTube anymore, they're all gone. But uh, that's what I used to do. And then it turned back into a gaming channel. It got a bunch of subscribers but I stopped doing it for two years I think. And then I started doing this and I haven't looked back since then. This is like the longest I've run a channel and I am incredibly happy with it. Uh, you know, fifth time's the charm, as they say. <laughs> but basically, to answer your question, uh, no one inspired me. I've just always, always wanted to be a YouTuber. And I don't really consider myself a YouTuber now. Uh, I produce not that many videos and I uh, obviously have another job. Uh, and I'm working on another career as well. Which I think is fine, and a lot of YouTubers do that, but um, 
at the moment, I don't really consider myself a YouTuber. I'm just kind of a I'm personality on YouTube. Would you rather give up cross-dressing or drinking? Fuck, that's hard. Because um, <laughs> I do both right now, and I like doing both of them. Sometimes at the same time. See, I feel like I could get by in life without alcohol. And technically I could get by in life without cross-dressing. But um, cross-dressing has less negatives, I suppose. This isn't as healthy. So I could probably give up drinking. But of course, this is highly theoretical, and that's the choice I would make in this very unlikely situation, because I am currently planning to keep drinking and keep cross-dressing. There was another question, uh, why did you start YouTube? Obviously, like, it's because I always wanted to be a YouTuber. The reason I started this YouTube channel was because I I kind of thought, like, oh, I, I could do something with my cross-dressing, because I started cross-dressing before. And I was like, I could do something like this. I could do YouTube. Um, it would be a good hook. You know, you come on channel. Oh my God, it's a crossdresser. Kind of a good hook into the channel. And then I uh, discovered Reddit videos and I saw they were blowing up. And I really liked a lot of the new channels that were coming up. Um, and it was about a year after they'd like really popped off. And I started one in October and it turns out a bunch of people had the exact same idea as me. And there was a lot of channels that I think um, are kind of like the top, considered the top like Reddit channels. We all actually started around the same time, within months of each other. Everyone started at the, the end of um, 2018, and then we had the Reddit spike, of course, at the beginning of 2019, and that's where everyone took off. Um, so yeah, every <laughs> kind of all the big Reddit channels that are around right now, uh, they all started at the same time as me. Uh, we just kind of all had the same idea that Reddit was kind of popping off and we were like, we gotta do that. Pancakes, waffles or crumpets? Pancakes, but um, I prefer the the ones my dad's make, which are cinnamon and apple pancakes and they're really fucking thick. They're not smooth pancakes, they have like a crust and it is fucking gorgeous. Oh my God, seriously. I, when I leave my house, I am taking that recipe with me because, oh my god, they are the best pancakes I've ever eaten. Besides YouTube, uh, what have you been doing to keep yourself sane during lockdown? Basically just, it, it, it's this and playing video games is what I do. <laughs> and drinking sometimes, yeah. Drinking helps. That's really all I've been doing. I'm okay with that. I feel productive making YouTube videos, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But yeah, that's kind of all, <laughs> all it's been. This and playing Minecraft. Right, we've reached 10 minutes. Okay. If I keep drinking, I will stop realising how awful it is. Oh, no, 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 don't spill. Don't spill. This is very expensive vodka. Uh, uh, Joe Biden would be a terrible president. <laughs> oh, this is why I mix. This is why I mix. This is why I mix. It's it's not nice. Why do we do this? Ah. Right. Anyway, sorry. What was I doing? What's your favorite outfit to film in? I love film. I love dresses. I love wearing dresses. Um, in terms of actually filming, it depends on the time of year. Basically, during winter, I can pretty much wear anything. Oh. And I can wear like thicker dresses, uh, but during summer, like it is now, uh, it's very, very warm. Um, <laughs> and so I like to wear like just baggy t shirts and skirts. I do try and put on like a, 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 bit, a better look for YouTube, um, but if you go on my live streams, <laughs> it is just me wearing a like baggy t shirt and, uh, and a skirt, and that's basically it. Uh, and I even wear a, a baseball cap or whatever it's called because so, it's a bit cooler than a beanie. Can you show off some of your favourite outfits? Um, not right now, however, maybe maybe another time. Uh, maybe maybe that would be a good, good for a video, but uh, problem is uh, I don't iron my video, my uh, outfits. That I How did you get into cross-dressing? What does it mean to you? Is it something you just do for YouTube for fun? Uh, and because it is a fun way to stay anonymous or does it play a larger role in your day-to-day -day life? Well, I got into it because of a multitude of reasons, one of which, uh, kind of, well, at the end of the day, cross-dressing is kind of a sexual thing. It kind of is for most, like, just cross-dressers. Um, it's not really for me anymore, like, uh, I don't really consider it that. The other reason I got into it is because I was just in a bad place. I was in a, it was, I was in, like, a weird place where I, 
was not happy where I was going in life. Um, my exams like weren't going the way I wanted them to. Uh, re I just really wasn't happy with like how my life was going to turn out. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I kind of created a separate character of myself in order to, to kind of separate the two worlds. I let Tatiana be the person I kind of want to be and I'm happy being all the time. Um, and I let my other self be the one that has to deal with real life uh, a lot. And that may not be healthy. But frankly, I haven't seen a therapist, so I don't give a shit. But in the long run, it did actually help me, so I, I think it's fine. Tatiana was just a separation of myself that I could be happy being um, when I wasn't myself, for example. And to answer your other question, um, it's pretty much just for YouTube most of the time. However, I do also sometimes go out cross-dressing. Uh, not that often at all, and it will only be for going to places. I will cross-dress, go to someone's house. Or, or an event, and that's it. But yeah, I, I don't do it like that often. Uh, would you rather have to fight three 16 year olds or 16 three year olds? Oh, definitely 16 three year olds. Like, you could just batter them around. Like, you've got 16 three year olds, it's just like bam, 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 kick one with your leg, bam, bam, they're out your way, right? But three 16 year olds, I mean, they're, they're adults. They are adults at that point. I mean, like, they will kill you. They will just kill you. Uh, what pronouns do you use? Because I have seen people use he, she, and they when talking about you, and I am confused. I explain this every time, but it's, it's fine uh, for a lot of new people. Uh, I can use any pronoun. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Uh, I like female pronouns when I'm Tatiana because it kind of helps me with the separation thing. I enjoy being t called female terms. That's just kind of like a preference, but it's it's not a necessity. You can call me he, that's absolutely fine. You can be they, that's absolutely fine. You can call me she, it's absolutely fine. It's more your comfort level than anything. But in terms of like preference, it's it's she when I'm Tatiana, but it, 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 it literally does not matter. Owo or uwo? Owo. What weapons would you bring into a battle? Gun. What is your favourite movie? I really like Arrival, uh, the movie that wasn't watched just that much, uh, but is really, really cool in uh, just its concept um, and delivery. It was a really unique concept for uh, an actual like Hollywood movie. Um, it's completely different from like anything else, uh, and it's right up my alley with uh, the kind of like science fiction I enjoy. So. I absolutely love Arrival. Not necessarily because it was the best movie ever made, but for me, it is exactly what I want movies to be. How do you deal with discrimination and hate? I don't get that much of it. I honestly don't. I'm kind of in this like corner of the internet. People only really find me who aren't really looking. Uh, and um, things are, the, pretty much all my videos up until the Femboy video have pretty much been fairly neutral and then we've got a lot of new people who are actively searching for femboy stuff and that's when I started seeing a lot of like ugh, ugh, you're kind and stuff like that. It was very, um, very weird. Uh, basically if I stick to myself and do my own videos, uh, it's fine. Uh, it's only really when I mention like uh, what I am or anything that people like actively come and find me, if you know what I mean. And in terms of dealing with it, I don't, it, I, I ignore it. It doesn't matter. We're on the internet. It doesn't matter. Unless someone is actively threatening your life and you know that they can find you uh, or cause you some kind of harm, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's a million more people like them, but there's a million of people that like you just fine. It doesn't matter. How are you? I'm lovely. Thank you for asking. Would you prefer the term trap daddy or trap mammy? Mammy. I, I, yeah, I like female terms more. I, I enjoy them. They're, it's more of a personal enjoyment than a necessity for me. How long have you been cross-dressing? Um, two years now, I think. Yeah, two years. Two whole years. I actually don't remember when I started. I think it must have been June. I feel like it must have been June. Uh, when I started cross-dressing, it was about two years ago. Shit. Yeah, I, 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 tried to, I tried to remember that last year, but it didn't work out. Maybe maybe next year, maybe I'll find the exact date I started cross-dressing, because it's kind of a, a nice little anniversary for me. Right, I need to do another shot. 
I'm trying to do them every 10 minutes of recording. For you, of course, it's gonna look like every three minutes. <laughs> Which is not good. <laughs> oh dear. Tatiana, you're an alcoholic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've started to believe Bush did do 9-11. <laughs> right to the back of my throat. Right to the back of my throat. <sighs> um. Anyway, what kind of dress would you recommend between sundress or 60s housewife? I don't think I have any sundresses. I think I might have one, but so I I, I mostly own um, cocktail dresses, which is the kind of 60s housewife kind of thing. Although cocktail dresses are more formal wear rather than uh, actively like 60s housewife. Um, but I like the, the long, the large skater skirts rather than like uh, like the thin ones because uh, sundresses are very slim, whereas um, cocktail dresses kind of flare out a bit more. Um, I prefer cocktail dresses. That's just my opinion. What is your skincare routine? I don't take care of my skin at all. Seriously. It's shit under here. You don't see it, it's shit. <laughs> I definitely need to, I definitely need to. I don't though. How public are you uh, with, amongst other people such as family and friends? Um, my friends pretty much all know. All my close friends know that I cross dress. Um, they're kind of cool with it. Uh, <laughs> most of them are totally fine with it at this point. Um, obviously there was some adjustment period of like, what the fuck is this? At least to my face. Cool with it. Uh, obviously I don't cross-dress in front of them as much, but I feel comfortable enough to cross-dress in front of them. In terms of my family, um, no one. But uh, it's kind of a reason for that. It's not that my family would not accept it or something like that. They're a very left-wing liberal family. Would totally be fine. And in fact, I think they know. I think they know uh, that I cross-dress. They, at the very least, know that I have a second identity called Tatiana Pirogova. In fact, sometimes mail has come through the door addressed to Tatiana Pirogova, and they have given it straight to me. I also think they believe I wear makeup, even though I don't, but they have kind of mentioned it in the background, like, oh, this is where he gets his love of makeup from from a picture from when I was eight in a school play. They know I record videos as Tatiana, but they've never outrightly told me they know I cross-dress, and in fact, I don't think they've seen any of, like, this. I don't think they've seen my channel, I don't think they've really seen much of my clothing, but I know they've probably seen a bit, and that's just from the fact that the, I've been doing it for two years, and they've just seen little bits as it goes. And I'm happy with that. This isn't a big deal for me. This isn't my identity, or sexual identity, or gender change, or anything like that. This is just something I do. And I don't believe that I need a big coming out party for me. I don't need to do some box in the hallway and they open it up and it says I cross dress. This isn't a big deal for me. This is just something I do and I'd rather my family just found out naturally because it's not a life-changing event. I am still their son at the end of the day. It just happens that I've been cross-dressing for the last two years and that's that. Congrats on 50k. Do you have any bartending hell stories you're comfortable sharing? The only one I can think of is there was a guy who was definitely doing some cocaine in the bathroom and it was really weird and he'd go in there and he'd come out a lot happier, let's say. We couldn't technically prove it and he could actually hold a conversation like perfectly well um, when he would come up to the bar and order drinks. So there's no reason to not serve him and obviously like, we couldn't really tell if he was doing it. We were just pretty sure that he kept getting up from the bar, going into the bathroom, coming out, and ordering weird drinks, like two espresso martinis, a Guinness, and a whiskey. Very weird order. And then, of course, he just kind of sat there looking at them for about two hours, and then drank them all at once and left. To be honest, he didn't talk to us that much, so he was a lovely bar patron. The less you talk to me, the more I'm going to let you get away with. How do you sleep at night knowing you are single-handedly raised everyone's beauty standards? 
Have you ever gotten into Quartus Tree yet? Um, it's a lot of fun and not nearly as comfortable as people and media make it. I haven't, but frankly, all this lockdown weight I've been putting on, I might start. How does it feel like to cross-dress? I kind of want to cross-dress when I'm older. I'm curious. Also, do you have a Discord server? Yes, I have a Discord server. But in terms of what cross-dressing is, I mean, it just feels like nothing. <laughs> this is the thing. It, it really is dependent on the person doing it. I'm completely comfortable cross-dressing. At this point, it kind of feels natural. Effectively, I am wearing my work clothes. I do this to do YouTube most of the time, so it's kind of just like, put on my uniform. I enjoy it, I actually I get joy out of doing it, but for me I can't really accurately say what it feels like because I feel like it would be different dependent on the person. If you had to fight another YouTuber who also don't show their face, who would it be? Oh, I was about to say Bluestone, but he shows his face, fuck. Um, oh, Memulus for that e, that e girl's picture. Because that made me angry, because that's just me, right? That is, that's just me. There's no difference between us. If he, if he puts on longer hair, if he gets a wig for one of his videos, I'm screwed. I'm out of the business. That is it. I need to beat him down before he can try anything. I would knock that little short ass off his high perch. With a one, two, smack two. That's what. Memulus, if you're out there, fuck you. Go on then. We'll do two more shots, have a break of the video so my camera has time to cool down. And then by the time I get back, I'll be very drunk because the alcohol would have kicked in. <laughs> it, it says on the back, never drink alone. Um, I like to imagine I'm drinking with all of you. Uh, if you are of legal age in your country. If not, I don't know, drink some fruit juice, I don't know. What do kids drink? Water? <clears throat> yeah, I definitely don't want to drink water right now. I definitely want to drink this. Skull. Oh, if I'm not sick tonight, I don't know what is going to happen. Alright. <sighs> Favourite Minecraft music disc? I mean, come on, it's Star Wars. It's Stahl. What, what do you think I am? Uncultured? Don't get me started on Pigstep. Don't get me started on Pigstep. Uh, what do you think of the ratio of people who watch your videos for your looks to people who watch your videos for your personality? Well, I don't really have that much in terms of looks. I have a look, and it's a look people like. But I think if you're gonna watch my videos, you're gonna have to put up with my personality. To be honest, I don't think there's many people who mute my videos and just look at me. And by the fact that I've only got about 35 people on my OnlyFans, clearly you're just not interested. Clearly you don't love me. Do you want me to think that, that you don't love me? SMH guys, SMH. Where the hell do you get your dresses? I fucking love them. And you, lol. Uh, pretty much all of my dresses are from Amazon, except for a couple which are from a store I don't know the name of because they were gifts. Um, but most of my dresses are from Amazon. Uh, mainly because, one, cheap. Two, uh, you can get them delivered to an Amazon box so they don't come to the door and I don't have to answer as many questions. Which video have you had the most fun making? And which video have you had the least fun making? Most fun mating? Most mating? Christ. The most fun making video? Um, well the baby fur video, and I'm gonna go back to this video a lot, the baby fur video is the best video I've ever made, and I am totally fine with saying that. That is the best video I've ever made. There is no doubt about it. I enjoyed editing it, I put way more effort in editing it than I ever put anything, way more effort in scripting it, and I loved doing it the entire time. Um, and I was super happy when it went out. Um, this, because th there was another question, there's another question on here which was, what video have I hated making that, um, people liked? And the video that I can think of is, um, the April Fool's video I did, where I did mildly interesting, r slash mildly interesting. I hated that subreddit. I absolutely hated it, and everyone was suggesting it because it was the new big thing. It's also such mildly interesting. For those that don't know, it's a subreddit where people post things that are kind of interesting, that aren't that, you know, that aren't special. There is no joke to be made because they are so 
average and interesting. There, there's nothing I can say. I don't know what people think my, my Reddit videos normally are, but my videos are mostly on text where I can read things and make funny voices and make jokes about the things in the text. How am I going to make things about pictures? Or like facts, that's all they were, facts. And it was so boring, and all I did through the video as the April Fool's joke was sit there and go like, yeah, that's kind of interesting, I guess. And I hated that video, it sucked. I even privated it for a time because I hated it so much. And yet people liked it. Trash content, it was trash content. No homo, yes homo, or maybe homo. Who knows, buddy? Do your fake boobs have nipples? They do, actually. Um, I don't know if they can show. They can't show off. This is a bit too thick. No, no, that, no, they can't. Okay. <laughs> How many shots are we in? Four, four shots. They're very good though, and people ask where uh, you can get them. I think I did this for the last Q and A, but I will put a link to them in the description. Um, where you can get them. You can get them in two skin tones, I think, if you look on Amazon. Uh, you can also get them in completely customizable sizes, uh, and you can get the special bra, which I use, which is the pockets for them. Mine are uh, completely detached, and so they're not, like, all attached to, like, a bra system, uh, which I prefer. And they also feel great. They're amazing. They're very dense, because they're medical-grade silicone, so they're quite heavy, but they are pretty great. The shape is amazing, too. And I've had them for two years. Um, in terms of like the, this is kind of a, not quite the question because I've kind of already answered it, but in terms of like what my parents think of my YouTube channel, my dad doesn't give a shit. My mum is kind of uh, against it because she kind of wants me to focus on my like career in bartending, which is fine. I'm fine with her like worrying about me like that. Bartending is kind of a more attainable goal, whereas YouTube isn't an attainable goal, a very rare thing to happen. Uh, even me getting to 50k subscribers is an incredibly rare occurrence on YouTube. People don't normally get to that point. Um, so, uh, yeah, my mum's kind of against it, my dad doesn't care. With all of your clothing items, how many different combinations do you think you could make? Alright, let's bring up the calculator. No, I don't have that many. Do I? I'm gonna say 20 top items. Pla oh, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you work this out? I have like 20 top items plus like... So we're gonna call, we're gonna call it 20, 40 items of clothing. Power of... 40? Is that how you work that out? God, I haven't done maths in a long time. Hang on, a minute. I think I need to bring up um, scientific calculator. Which is a fucking large number. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, asking me a maths question at this stage probably wasn't gonna resolve any um, answers. I don't know why I tried. <laughs> do you step on your OnlyFans subscribers? I do, if that's your thing. When's your next stream? No idea. I stream randomly, but I do have a Twitch and you should follow it because I am gonna be streaming the Minecraft server that I have paid for three months in advance. So you're gonna play on it, okay? What's your favourite colour? Burgundy is kind of my favourite colour, which is kind of this colour. Um, it's, it's, it's more in the, the lace red dress. Uh, that's kind of burgundy. Really like burgundy. Although, really like how I look in that pink dress in the baby fur video. I do look pretty cute. Pink is kind of a good colour for me. Your thoughts on the LGBT community? What do you want? What do you want, a review? Do you want me to 5 star rate it? 10 star rate it? Good! <laughs> Where's your ideal place to live? I really have thought about... I know it's kind of a stereotypical thing, but moving to uh, LA would be like a huge thing for me because it is not only like the... like the YouTuber place, right? That's where all the YouTubers go. But it's also really, really good for bartending, so I could actually legitimately go there. Even if I wasn't doing YouTube, it would be a great place for me to do bartending, because you get so much money in tips. So actually, in terms of, yeah, I think, I only think LA 
would be the best place for me to go. That's my kind of ideal place. But I have a whole plan in place where I would own property uh, in England, uh, rent that out and be able to afford to live in LA because LA is kind of a, a risky place. But it is kind of an idea of mine and it's an idea I've shared with my family and they're kind of okay with the idea of me doing that. It's a long-term plan, but it is a plan. How did you come up with the look for your character? Do you think you'll remain faceless for the rest of your YouTube career? See, when I started cross-dressing, I made myself a promise that I would do it properly and I would never accept myself if I looked bad. And when I say bad as a cross-dresser, I have to be tactful and say, um, you can look however the hell you want, but from my point of view, I never wanted to be the cross-dresser that had the beard and, you know, like, just scruffy makeup on and a horrible wig or no wig at all and just had the short hair and, like, was just a dude wearing a dress. That's what I promised myself I'd never be. The problem with that is that when you've got to learn makeup, you kind of have to accept that you're gonna look like you've got scruffy makeup on for the entire thing and you look like a dude in a dress. And I didn't wanna do that. And I had a scarf, a very, very thick scarf. It was an actual regular scarf. And I put it on and I looked at myself and I went, that's better. I can't see my face and that is better. Put on some sunglasses, that was better. And I wrote this all down in a book and I was writing down as I went, like, what did I do today? Is this an improvement? What could I do to improve? And I got to this point and this is the character I've stuck with. The reason I wear the beanie was because my old wig was really bad on the top, so I was covering that up. Um, I'm wearing sunglasses because I don't do my uh, eyebrows and I don't wear eye makeup. I'm wearing the mask because I don't do other face makeup and I'm wearing these because I uh, don't often shave my arms. There's a reason I do a lot of things and it's not just for style, it's for purpose. The only thing that is the stylistic choice is really the dress. The boobs are actually in fact there to increase the size of my chest, to make the dress go into my waist and then back out again when it flares outwards, making it look like I have a waist that goes in, even when I'm actually completely flat. I thought about this a lot, and I'm happy with how I look. In terms of whether or not I'll remain faceless for the rest of my YouTube career, probably. I don't see a reason to not be a faceless YouTuber at this point. It's not for security. That's what a lot of people think, it's for security. It's not. People like the mystery. You like the mystery, that's why you're asking. People often said, oh, are you going to do a face reveal 100 subscribers? Obviously not. Am I going to do a, a 10,000 subscriber face reveal? No. Am I going to do a 50,000 subscriber re reveal? No. Am I going to do a million? Probably not. Am I going to do a 4 million? Probably not. Am I going to do 10 million? Probably not, because let's be honest, I'm never going to make it that far, but that's not the point. The point is, people like the faceless thing. It's, it draws people in, and this is my look now. This is just who I am. This is what Tatiana looks like. Tatiana is not my face underneath. I'm totally chill with that. This is how I look, and frankly, I look beautiful as I do, even though I don't have a face. We've been going for an hour. And I kind of skipped a shot. So I'm going to do that now. There's a lot. The problem is, back when 30k, I had 30k subscribers. Now I have 50k subscribers and there's a lot more people asking questions. Though I'm pretty sure it took about three hours to film the 30k subscriber special. I literally had to put my camera in the freezer to cool it down. Then again, I was also drunk, so maybe I didn't have to do that, but the point still stands. This one is to world peace. May we never achieve. For violence brings innovation. Oh, I can tell I'm getting drunk because that's getting easier. Okay, I took about a 15 minute break. And the alcohol is like settled into my blood and I am, um, I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm struggling. We got a lot more questions to go through and I've already recorded for an hour.
I am gonna try and be as quiet as I can, but I feel like I'm gonna start shouting. Do you have a separate storage for your dresses in case people come over? Here, in here, secret compartment on the other side of my bed. However, I now have so many dresses and clothes and other things like that, that they've started spilling out onto, like, the counter there. I just have dresses sitting there, um, and I don't care anymore. Why are you so hot? It's really annoying, to be honest. Well, you see, I'm just naturally this gorgeous and beautiful and fantastic. I just can't help it. I'm really sorry, guys. How did you come up with your username? So I actually stole this from a book. It's a book uh, series called uh, World War, I think. The first book in the series, I think, is World War Tipping the Balance, or... The important thing is, it's a book series by Harry Turtledove, who is an alt-history writer. It was a book series about aliens invading Earth halfway through World War II, so it was 1942. The Allies were kind of losing, but obviously about to start winning. The Axis was kind of winning, but obviously about to start losing. It was a balanced period. Everyone was kind of in the middle of the war. And then suddenly, aliens attacked. And the book series is fantastic, it's great. It has point of views from everyone on Earth, including the aliens. And the name is actually from a Russian sniper who was a character in about three of the books, or two of the books, I think. Anyway, it was a really cool name, and I was cross-dressing for a couple of months, and then I uh, started making a social media account. So I think I made a Twitter account first, uh, or an Instagram, I can't quite remember, and I needed a name for it, and that's when I went, I had that book in front of me, and I went, oh, I remember a character. Tatiana Pirogova, and I thought it was a really good name, and uh, it's the one that stuck, and it's, it's, uh, in my, in my eyes, it's, it's my name at this point. If people say the name Tatiana Pirogova, for example, my friends, if they refer to me as Tatiana Pirogova, I react to it in the same way as I do my normal name at this point. It's still a little bit odd to hear it from them, but it's, at this point, the same thing to me. I have two names. One of which you'll never know. We start doing gaming content. No, it it it's not it's not my thing on this channel. I tried it once. It's just not my type of thing. I'll do it on my Twitch, but not on my main channel. If I, if I ever make a second channel, I might do like gaming content, but it, it's not really a smart move. What are the color of your eyes and hair? Well, my eyes are blue, but my hair itself is. A slightly more ginger of this hair colour. It's not the same. It's it's not like ginger. It's red hair kind of ginger. Strawberry blonde, as people have referred to it throughout my life. I don't really know what hair colour it is. No one's no one seems to know. It's like in the middle of blonde and ginger. What is that one? How hard is it being the girl of everybody's dreams? Oh, it's, it's a very taxing job. As I'm sure you understand, I, I just constantly bombarded by compliments. Oh, God, no, no, I can't handle it sometimes. Can I have a hug? No. Has anyone ever recognised you just by your voice? I am not that famous. I have 50,000 subscribers and 50,000 of them aren't active. And the likelihood is that 50% of my viewers are from America anyway, and so the UK only makes up about 5% of my viewership. So the absolute likelihood of someone recognising me by my voice, which is an unlikely chance anyway, is so small that it's, it, it doesn't happen. No, no one's ever recognised me by my voice. Is there any outfits that you eventually want to get? Well, for one, I want to get a Femboy Hooters outfit, because I think it would be funny. Uh, but two, there are some like, I want to get nicer dresses than this. Uh, this is very cheap. This, I think this one itself costs about £14. I want to get some nice feeling dresses. Some ones that, you know, work to my shape more and feel good and feel worth it. Why are you so thick? I eat a lot of Papa John's pizza, but also genetics. I kind of got lucky with my ass. How do you look so fabulous on camera with those layers? 
do you just have air conditioning? Nope, I live in the UK, and the UK doesn't have air conditioning, really. It's not a thing. I just suffer. I genuinely just suffer here. I genuinely just suffer for your enjoyment. Seriously, there's no new air in here right now. It is just getting hotter and hotter. And when I record videos for you, that's what happens. It gets hotter and hotter. I am breathing in my own breath constantly. CO2 is just pouring out of my mouth and back into my mouth. And I am substituting it with vodka as well. So this video, if you imagine, I am just not thinking right now at all. Will you marry me? Uh, okay, here's the constraints. Are you hot? Number one. And are you rich? You must answer yes to both of these. Do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend? No, I am not dating. I am going to be alone forever. Very, very sad. How expensive is it to be a trap? Um, you just have to kind of buy the starting things. Getting a good wig is quite expensive. Um... My one itself costs £70, it's a lace front wig, it's very good, um, and I love it. Breasts are the same thing, but obviously you don't have to, that's kind of a personal choice. And just buying new dresses, it's just like buying new clothes, and so y you are going to have to put in a little bit of an investment. But other than that, it's not that much more expensive. Well, then again, women's clothes cost more, generally, than guys' clothes, whether or not that's justified or not. I'm not the one to argue, but they are, so be prepared for that. What are your favourite YouTubers? Um, basically, the only people I watch are the Yogscast and people that are kind of involved with them in terms of, like, casual YouTube channels. I just, I enjoy, I enjoy their like main channel stuff and some of their streams and stuff. But in terms of commentary channels, uh, Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden are like two great guys. Um, I love their stuff. Nakey Jakey as well, huge inspiration for my videos. Brutal Moose, that's him. Brutal Moose is a big inspiration for the Baby Fur video as well as Nakey Jakey. Uh, so I really like uh, Brutal Moose, uh, his videos are pretty great. Those are kind of my like kind of inspirations for like this channel and the direction I want to take this channel in. Where did you buy your wig? Uh, Webster's Wigs is a UK company. Um, I'm not, I'm pretty sure they, they well they ship to America but uh, you might have to look for a specific American company. How is it that you like to work in a bar? Why do you choose this job? I just like bartending, it's really fun. Uh, mixing drinks and shit is really fun and I haven't taken a shot in a really long time so I'm going to do this while I explain. Um, yeah, I, I did an entire training course in Amsterdam uh, about mixology, it was super fun, I loved it. It's just kind of, it's just kind of my thing. Um, I love uh, kind of talking to people. But most importantly, I love talking shit about the guests behind their backs with the other bartenders. That is what I truly enjoy doing, uh, and I cannot wait to get back to it when we go back to, bar, uh, to the bar. It's fantastic. I... God, it's so fun. Oh. God damn it. Why am I doing this to myself? Do I hate myself? Do I want to die? Oh, it came back up. What's the best flavoured ice cream? <laughs> what is it? I don't know. I mean, it's vanilla, but that's beside the point. Yeah, there's a, there's a few questions I've seen here about where to buy these breasts. I will leave a uh, link down in the description. It's just from Amazon. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but I mean, it's uh, cheaper than breast implants. So you could spend Bill Gates's money. What would it be on? Oh God, like all of it at once? If I could spend it all at once, um, I'd probably just buy like a lot of the Amazon. Like not, not Amazon the company, I'd buy a lot of the Amazon and like keep it protected areas. I mean, it's just a smart move to do if I, if I like, if I could spend all of Bill Gates' money at once, I'd, I'd probably just do that. I'd buy a lot of the Amazon. Or at least invest in, like, protection agencies as well as, like, uh, firefighters in that area. It just seems like a smart thing to do. 
and then I could keep like 1% of his money and still live a very, very lavish life. Should I become a femboy, and if so, how? I don't think that it's a should. It's a, you, you kind of, you kind of be a femboy. Um, it's kind of a, a natural choice. It's not, it's not a, it's not a should I or should not. You know, you, you, you don't either decide to become kind of like, you don't just kind of decide I'm going to become very, very skinny and I'm going to start shaving my body and things like that. Or, or the alternative is I'm going to become very, very buff or whatever. Just kind of how you feel. You, you kind of naturally go into what you feel like doing. My camera stopped recording and because I was drunk, I didn't notice. Don't drink, kids. Don't drink. If you enjoy kind of the femboy sort of vibe, then you'll kind of just naturally fit into that, and that's totally fine. I don't think you should make the active choice to be like, I'm, I'm going to become very skinny and shave my hair and whatever, or the alternative being I'm going to become very buff. I don't think you need to see it like that. You'll just kind of naturally fit into whatever you fit into, and people might refer to you as a femboy if that's kind of way you're leaning. What should I make for dinner tonight? Please help. Giant chicken nugget. So you get a chicken breast, beat that down into its into a shape of a like a giant chicken nugget, and then you bread it and you fry it on either side, and then you serve that with like some pasta, like penne or something, uh, with like a passata sauce. Super nice. Love it. Simple, easy, tastes really nice. Have you considered turning cross-dressing into a career such as drag race? performing in bars. I mean, if I make it into a YouTube career and I kind of want to go from like YouTube to comedy, if that's kind of the direction I somehow get into, if YouTube really takes off and I actually become like a decently popular YouTuber, I'd love to progress into comedy. That would be like the dream goal. Of course, the actual dream goal is having a show where I get famous people around a uh, poker table and we play poker together. That's the actual dream goal. Um, that's my idea for a show. If you steal it, if anyone comes out with a show like that, I know you will have watched this video and I will beat you to death. Understand that. But anyway, I, I do want to progress this into a career. In terms of performing in bars, I have thought about that. I have there are there are a few bars, especially in Brighton, which is a place near to me, that are very LGBT focused. It's a very LGBTQ plus uh, community area, and there's a few bars in there. Where I think I might be able to convince that this is okay. The problem is that the owners might be like, well, I mean, we need you to be able to serve drinks properly and stuff like this, and I might not be able to get away with the whole get-up, including the mask and the sunglass and whatever. But I have thought about it, and at some point I might try it on once I move out and everything, and I move closer to Brighton and stuff, which is the current plan. I might try and go to a couple of these bars and be like, hey, um... I'd like to apply, I'm a bartender, but also a cross-dress. Just a little bonus for you. And a few of them might be quite accepting of that and uh, might enjoy it. Especially the ones that uh, employ drag queens quite a lot. But right now, it's not part of my thing. I, I need to move out first and then I need to start looking at other bars and... Will you help me with my math homework? No, because I was very bad at maths. Actually, that's not true. I got a B in maths and I was very proud of myself. Uh, that was in college and I cannot remember a single thing from it though. So, good luck. I'm trans. Do you have many trans fans? Or am I the only one? Um, as far as I'm aware, I have quite a lot of trans fans. You're you're not alone. I've seen a lot of trans fans, and I'm I'm very happy that you've uh, come to my channel and you uh, enjoy it enough to stick around. How the hell does your hair always look so nice? It's fake. How is your fashion sense so good? It's just because I'm better than you. Sorry, sorry. Just uh. Just spitting some straight facts here. Have you ever found it hard to be a crossdresser? Like being judged by your family or being sexualized by others? Hey now, who says I don't enjoy that? Show us your room. No, it's a fucking mess. You can't tell. This is my computer, right? Where do you think I put all my trash? Just.
yeah. Or in fact, uh, down here, or, or here under my desk. What's your favorite animal, queen? I'm a female, but I really want to cross-dress as a woman in a man's body. I'm not sure how to figure myself out here. Your opinions. I think you like the femboy aesthetic. I've seen a lot of people say that, that they like the femboy aesthetic. I've seen the femboy aesthetic be compared to the, like, e-girls aesthetic, and I think that's kind of accurate. Things like chokers and colourful hair, it's an e-girls or femboy kind of thing. The only difference being that femboys are often flat-chested. I think if you like the femboy aesthetic and you're a woman, you might quite like the e-girls aesthetic. But that's just my opinion on it. Opinions on eggs with spines, is that not just like chickens? What do you hope happens by the end of 2020? God, I hope the end. Just, just the end. A meteor, a, a super volcano, something, just the end. How and where is your mailbox so we can send you gifts? I am actually planning on reopening the mailbox. So a long time ago, obviously the new viewers don't know this, but I had a mailbox. It was quite expensive to keep running and when my viewership started to drop, I couldn't afford to keep it going. But now I've got new viewers, I've got OnlyFans, my Patreon's doing quite well and YouTube is providing me with enough income, I feel comfortable reopening the mailbox. However, it's not open yet, so don't go looking for the old address or anything, it's not going to be the same one. When I do open the mailbox, I will release a video, it will either be at the start of a video or it will be a unique video on its own where I will describe uh, the address, how you should send things to me, as well as uh, I will incorporate uh, my dress size and things like that. Do you cross dress ironically or is it a hobby of yours? It became a hobby of mine and then it's become kind of a half identity. It's half of me, I think. I'd consider myself half Tatiana and half my other self. If you could learn a language simply by hearing it once, what language would you want to learn? See, I kind of want to say Russian because I, I do kind of want to learn Russian because I think because I've got the name Tatiana Pirogova and I had a lot of uh, Russians and Ukrainians and Bulgarians say, hey, uh, are you you know, my country, uh, I'd, I'd have to say no, I'd love to be able to speak uh, Russian. But if I'm thinking about this sensibly, Spanish would probably be the language I want to learn. It's more versatile, it's the one most used, and in terms of bartending, I want to one day move to LA and do bartending, and they speak a lot of Spanish there. Why is your laugh so cute? Is it? Is it? We ever get tired of roasting the US, because they are, with distance, the best and definitely not damaged and twisted country in the world? Uh, no, I'm never going to get bored of it. Uh, you're a stupid country that are a bunch of traitors who left the Union, uh, and you should feel bad for that forever. Burn, burn you traitorous bastards. Are you ever going to let your hair grow long? Uh, no, I shouldn't say no. That sounds like a final statement. Uh, I currently have no plans to let my hair grow long. Although, to be honest, I've had no choice in recent months because the hairdressers haven't been open. So actually my hair is a fucking mess right now under this, but uh, I have no plans to let it grow into, say, this. That's why I wear wigs. But no, I, I don't like the idea of letting my hair grow long. I, I, I like the two identities. I like being able to switch between them whenever I want. I think that's kind of a, a mini superpower I have, and uh, I really like to keep that. Do you have Tinder? I did, and then I got banned. Um, so I can't use it anymore. What do you think of geese? Uh, little bastards. That's what they are. Little bastards. Uh, I should take another shot, shouldn't I? I feel like I'm becoming too sober. So I'm going to take another shot. I'm putting the lid on, how sensible. But mainly because I think this is the eighth shot, and uh, I like things to be even, so...
like butter. Do you have a favourite cocktail, you sexy beast? Uh, I do. Uh, I like uh, Moscow Mules the most. Moscow Mules are very simple. It's um, just vodka, um, some lime juice and ginger beer. Very, very simple. And um, fun fact about the Moscow Mule. It was actually invented in Hollywood, I believe, and it was invented in a bar. The reason they invented the Moscow Mule is because they had a lot of vodka, which people didn't much drink because this was during Cold War America and vodka was from Russia. And they had a huge amount of ginger beer, which they'd misordered and nobody drank ginger beer. So it's believed one of the bartenders had the idea to mix the two together with some lime juice and create the Moscow Mule, and then the owners of the bar took the credit for it, which is standard, and fuck bar owners. But if you know anything about the Moscow Mules, you'll also know that they often come in copper mugs, and that is because the owner of the bar had a girlfriend who had a copper plating company. So she would copper plate a ton of stuff and he decided, well, why don't I get my girlfriend to make these copper mugs and the Moscow Mule will become a thing where uh, you drink it in a copper mug. And they did a huge advertising campaign and they make a huge amount of money. So there you go. The Moscow Mule has nothing to do with Moscow except the vodka, which was invented in Poland, so... So these are questions from the Discord now. Um, do you consider yourself LGBT? I... I don't really. I, I don't really consider myself. I, I don't really think about it. A lot of people, and it's questions that I've been ignoring for now, have asked me things like my sexuality and my gender identity, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't think about it. It really isn't a focus point in my life, and I understand it's important to other people, but to me, it, it's not important. I just prefer to be myself, and if myself happens to be a certain way, then that's just how I happen to be. I understand that people don't think like that, and, and often put a lot of importance on it, and that's totally fine. I agree that people should put importance on it, but for me, I prefer to just do whatever I want to do, you know? It's odd. It's not really my place to say what I feel. My brain will do what it wants to do, and I kind of am just following it along. How do you look so pretty? I'm not really looking to get into cross-dressing, but I'm curious as a trans girl. I want to wear more feminine clothing. I want to look more femme. I just don't know where to start. Well, I would say that the most important thing to look more femme is long hair and maybe boobs and uh, hips. That's the most important thing in terms of body. So a wig and fake breasts and um, flared skirts. You don't need to fake your hips, you just need to wear flared skirts and it will make it look like you have hips. There's a little tip for all of you. If you have Starbucks in the UK, would you consider yourself a frappuccino or a mocha type of person? So we do have Starbucks. I, I've never been in there, I think. I don't particularly like coffee, but the only coffee I really have ever had is cappuccino, mainly because it's just a ton of milk with coffee in the bottom. And the only time I drink that is when I'm at work and I am incredibly tired, normally on a morning shift into the night. So I do like a 12 hour shift. That is when I will drink a lot of coffee and I will drink cappuccinos, so I guess a frappuccino is the closest to that. What inspires you to keep making videos? Money. But also just it's, it's very fun. I enjoy making videos just because it's fun. That's It's fun for me. What are some skills you would like to improve on slash learn? I really want to learn how to draw. I started drawing and have like a, I, I got like a pens, special pens, special uh, pencils, a drawing pad and everything. And I started it for a few uh, uh, days and I think I managed to get a weekend, but um, then some stuff came up and I stopped doing it and I've stopped doing it uh, for now. But I really want to learn how to draw. Just uh, in terms of just like simple caricatures and being able to draw uh, myself every now and again and, and give examples to artists and stuff if I want to pay artists to do stuff. I really want to learn how to draw. It's something I've always talked about. Do you party, go to clubs, if you could today, or just stay home and dive into games slash YouTube to unwind? 
To be honest, staying at home is better for me. I've had some bad experiences with clubbing, and I don't really like clubbing, but uh, going to parties, like house parties with friends, um, I do kind of enjoy them. Even if they end rough, it's kind of a fun experience to be with your friends and have a few drinks and um, have a party uh, in kind of safety. So I'd say like parties are, are really good, but I would stay away from clubs. How do you manage cross-dressing with privacy? Well, it's just a matter of having a draw, really, and um, as long as your parents don't uh, root through your stuff like psychopaths, then you should be fine. You don't need much to start cross-dressing, just uh, a dress, a wig, maybe. That's kind of it. The thing is, you will want to slowly build up your collection, and you're gonna have to accept that you might run out of space in that drawer, and you'll have to get another drawer, and then you have to get another drawer, and then another drawer, and then another drawer, and then you're me, where you're just laying your shit out all over the place because you've run out of room. If I want to, I don't know, maybe slide into DMs, how hard would I miss and hit the wall and possibly break something? Listen, if you're over the age of 20, and you're a nice enough person and you want to flirt with me, I'm not gonna say no, because I'm an adult and frankly lonely, but the likelihood of you actually scoring with me is a probable zero. Dubs or subs? Dubs. I don't understand, like, the, the, the hatred of dubs. You... okay. Let me make this clear for anime fans. Okay, right. So you say you prefer subs. Fine. But by preferring subs, you're saying that you do not understand the language they are speaking, and you have to read the text. Correct. You have to read the text. You don't, you don't speak Japanese. So in that, you are saying that you aren't actually listening to what they're saying. You're just reading what they're saying. So why won't you listen to dubs? At least dubs don't have to do anything extra, they just get to listen to the voice actors. The voice actors that have likely been hired by the studio to make the correct voice acting shit. I don't understand the hatred of dubs. I didn't even watch anime, and I understand that dubs are better than subs. Out of curiosity, what distinction do you make between cross-dressing and drag? Well, drag I consider a completely separate thing from cross-dressing. Drag has a particular style. If you if you search up drag, it, it's a very different thing from just cross-dressing. Cross-dressing, all it requires is that you wear dresses or female clothing. Drag requires a whole separate makeup set. I mean, when you do drag, you don't do feminine makeup. You do drag makeup. It is drag specific. Drag is a completely different culture, in fact, from feminine culture, whereas cross-dressing is leaning towards the actual feminine culture. You want to look more feminine as a cross-dresser, whereas drag is looking more drag. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's absolutely fine, if you want to do drag that's absolutely fine, but it's, it's just not my thing. What are your hobbies other than alcohol, YouTube, gaming, and cross-dressing? Well, I do um, karate, that's kind of my thing, I, I like doing karate, sometimes I've shown off my like weapons that I have in certain videos. Um, uh, that's basically my kind of like a uh, hobby outside of YouTube and drinking. Okay, that's actually uh, all the questions I want to go through. There are a lot of questions that I didn't answer, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't uh, get to your questions, but I kind of tried to get through the ones that uh, weren't the same. I am, I am very, very drunk right now. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a nightmare to edit, but um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do whatever I said at the beginning with all the plugs and stuff and uh, there's a Minecraft server and stuff like that, I don't know, like, honestly, I just, I just, I just, I just want to go to bed at this point, um, so yeah, um, yeah, whatever, uh, thank you babes for 50k subscribers, I love you all, uh, it really means a lot. And I hope you watch my stuff in the future. Um, goodbye.